Hey guys, Swanet is here. Welcome back to another Game Maker Studio tutorial. I know it's been a real long time, um, and I know I didn't upload Friday, but um, just had a couple of issues with it I've had to deal with. But anyway, yeah, today I'm gonna be going into some Game Maker, and yeah, I want to actually try and implement a small menu system into my game that I'm actually working on. Now, in case you're unaware, I'm actually I'm working on a tank game, um, and I do intend to release this game within a year or so. Um, now, this is the project, and I'm going to be saving this under a different version number so I don't well, like, screw things up. So, first thing I'm going to do, save ours, uh, save it to my Google Drive folder, and then V26, okay. So, let just let just uh, save a minute, hang on a minute. There's a lot of resources, so these are all my sprites. Um, just like I'm trying to keep everything arranged in groups, but things are a bit dodgy at the minute. Why these shadows? They need they need to be arranged. Um, uh, the mine as well. What could do with going in a separate group? Um, but yeah, first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna create a new folder in the sprite folder, and what that's gonna do. Um, uh, which one is it now? Rename. Great group. Oh, there we go. Right, so we're going to call this uh, main underscore menu. Like that. And then we're going to create another subgroup in that. And then we're going to call that uh, buttons. Now, we only really do need one, so I'm going to call it spr underscore button. And I'm going to click with sprite. Now, I did actually literally just save some images a bit ago, um, and I'm going to navigate to those. So if we go to Game Design, it's Escape, and then Video Game Files, Project Files, nope, not Project Files, Sprites, that's what I want. Uh, menu, Buttons, yeah, these are the three buttons I want. So I've got a regular button, a hovering button, and a press button. Um, I quickly made these in Photoshop, but just 512 by 512 like resolution so hit ok then we want to go to center that so it puts the button in the center of the white origin um, and then yeah I think I think that's about it actually uh, go on modify mask as well uh, so this is actually the collision mask with the button so if I increase that notice how like that's actually making it so that it doesn't collide with anything so it's setting the alpha tolerance to 255 maximum value uh, but if I decrease that uh, see it creates like a box around it why well, that's just like a highlighted area where it will collide with um, so that's fine uh, and then okay so now what we want to do we've got rooms in here we've got RM level 0 uh, RM menu main RM menu settings now Level 0, what that is, that's actually it's just a sort of testing level. Um, I've got a like, small tank in here, a couple of mines, my player tank, um, and then, yeah, menu main, it's got literally nothing in it. And now, the reason why this room is actually below that, um, something to note here, the order of the room is this is actually how the, play, why the game will play out. So you've got level zero that will play first, and then once you complete that level, it'll move on to like menu main. Uh, that it just sets the top one as a default room sort of thing. But you can make it switch between rooms with the code, so you can make it do like room uh, go to whatever. Um, so yeah, what we're gonna do, we're gonna put that room above the level not because that will make the menu main execute first. And I'm just gonna go to background, set the color to black. So that makes it a little bit better. Um, increase the snap size. I'll set that to one two eight by one two eight, uh, and then actually wait a second. What I'll do? Is change the snap height to nine sixty. That's actually half of the the room width, uh, and then I'll set that to sixty four. That'll be better. Right. Okay then. So that's that sword. Now we want to go to the object white tab and then click this plus button here on objects, create a new group and then we're going to call it uh, main underscore menu and then we're going to 
create a new white group again buttons and then we're going to create obj button so obj underscore button and then that's going to use that sprite which we've just created in the main menu group like that. Now the way I'm going to do this um, add event and it's it's not really going to do anything to be quite honest the button itself it's just like sort of um, collision events really so I think it's under other uh, hmm normal wise game and uh, animation and end of path asynchronous key press oh sorry mouse there we go that's what we want so yeah we need a create event by default I'll, I'll get that sorted first um, in the code what you need to do um, I'm going to make the size of the text a bit bigger as well oh I've just I've just saved it by accident press the 5 <laughs> Um, I wanted to actually. Oh, wait, hang on. Pause that. Right. So, um, but now we've got them buttons, what it'll do initially, it'll set it the animation cycle to the room speed. So, set the image underscore speed to zero. That'll stop the animation playing. Um, and I'll set that to a minus. Right, okay, so that's fixed now. Um, and then, other thing we need to do, actually. Um, image underscore index equals zero. That'll set it to the beginning sprite, so the unhovered, unhighlighted um, light button. Now, add event mouse, mouse enter is what we want. And then I'm going to execute code, and then we're going to set this to uh, image index equals uh, one. Now that's going to set it to the um, the hovering sprite so um, it'll highlight the button but it won't do anything uh, and then add event uh, mouse mouse weave uh, then we're going to set that to image underscore index equals zero that'll return it to the unhovered button when the mouse weaves it um, and then we need two more add event mouse uh, left I like to do one thing here and I'll explain this uh, we want left pressed and then let's just do room underscore go to and then rm underscore level not like that that's the name of my room now, in fact, no, wait, 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 cut that, I'm going to control X for that, uh, image underscore index equals what, two, actually, yeah, and then, that's left pressed, bearing in mind, I'll explain this in a minute, uh, go to mouse, mouse, uh, oh, left release, that's what we want, execute code, and then room go to room level naught. So what it'll do, uh, when it enters the button, it'll highlight it and it'll change it to a different colour. And then when we press it, it'll change to the indented button. But it won't actually register the press of the button until we've released it. So what that does, that like, it prevents you from like sort of spamming the button and it adds a tiny bit of delay to it. Um, yeah, so all we need to do now is go to add the button to the main menu. Like that. So we've got a start button there. Um, now, here's the thing. What if you require multiple buttons in this, in this menu? Um, I'm going to explain this in a bit. Uh, First thing I'm going to do, though, we're going to actually start the game. Um, I'm just going to quickly go to the global game settings, though, because I want to make it sure that my actual project starts not in full screen mode, so you can see it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, let's do this. So it should start in room main, well, menu main now, and then we'll be able to click it. 
yeah, whatever. So notice it highlights when the mouse goes over it, and click it, changes to the other sprite, release, goes to the other room. So now I'm actually in my game. And yeah, this is my game, I don't think you've actually seen it, but it, it's coming on pretty nicely, like, so... Right then, so anyway, that's fine now, what? Other thing we need to do, uh, this is where it gets complicated. What I'm actually going to do, I'm going to create a variable in here, and I'm going to call it uh, button underscore type. And it's gonna equal zero like that. Now here's the thing: we when it goes left release, all of the buttons in the main menu need to do different functions. So let's just say, uh, I'm just trying to think now. Yeah, main menu main. That's what I want. Let's just add another button in here, and then go to buttons. Let's add another one in. So the top one, what that's going to do, that's actually going to start the game. The other one is going to make it so it closes the game. So what we want it to do, we want to assign them buttons different functions. So if we go to menu main and right click these uh, and then go to creation code, click that, set, um, I forget what I named the variable now. The, yeah, the variable I just created. Button type. Right, okay then. So, creation code. Button type for this one is going to equal not. Uh, creation code, what it is, it essentially executes code for one specific instance in the room. Uh, and it occurs when the room actually starts like, and the object is created. So, if we go to the other one and then creation code, set button type to one. Now it's gonna be cool this because that that'll be fine that. Um we'll go to the left released event. Now we're gonna put check in here. If button type equals zero like that and open a brace and close that off. Room go to room level not so that's going to go to the actual game and begin it. Uh, else, if button type equals 1, uh, and I'm actually, I'm actually unsure about the exit game now. Uh, wait, what I'm going to do, search. I think it's actually just game underscore end. Ah, oh, yeah, there we go. Right, okay. Let's just have a quick uh, You can end the game and again. Hmm. You know what? I'm not too sure what I'm going to do. It should be in here, actually. Resources, game, restart. End game. Oh, yeah, it must be that. Okay, so. <laughs> I'm getting a bit mixed up. So <laughs> it's literally been ages since I've used that function. So this will start the game, which it does. Now, if we run it again. That closes it. Yeah, so it does work. Now, what that's doing when I'm going on the left released event, it's checking which the button type is. And obviously, you can assign all the different buttons in your main menu different features. So one could go to like an options menu. Um, obviously, like you'd set the visibility of the previous buttons to false, and then set the visibility of the option buttons to like 100%. Um, or you could even just make it go to a different room and then that's got all your options and um, whatever's easier really. So yeah, that's just been a, a brief introduction to like um, 
yeah, the main menu system. Uh, one thing you could also do is add event draw and then you can make it so it draws text on top of the buttons. Um, but yeah, I'm probably going to cover that more in the next tutorial because there is a few things I need to cover that up with. Um, so yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video everyone. Uh, don't forget to leave a like if you've enjoyed it and you found it helpful in any way. And as always, don't forget to subscribe and peace out. I will catch you in the next one. Peace.